What's happening Heartscapers? Today we're going to be talking about a project I did, a little bit of a walkthrough of before and after, the decisions I made on it so that you can then apply this to when you do a consultation, what that looks like for a project and how to have an eye for what that design is going to look like to be both functional and aesthetically pleasing. If you enjoy these types of videos, please give this a like and subscribe to the channel. This really helps me. These don't typically get a whole lot of views, but I'm sure they're really helpful for you if you're looking to get into this industry or just looking for your own property, what to do with it and why. Let's get into this. So this is the project that we have starting off with, and this is what it looks like when it was all said and done. Essentially, we have a client here that wants a backyard patio, but the current grade of the yard is sloped as such that we cannot lay on that existing grade. It would just be too high, too steep of a patio. So essentially, we need to build this area up with essentially a raised patio, but we built up those walls to that raised patio to create a seat wall. So with this, let's start from the beginning. We know we need to install steps coming out from this porch area. The number of steps depends on the height to which we are gonna build those steps to. So we measure this and we get 21 inches from the top of this porch down to the existing grade. So 21 inches divided by three gives us three seven inch rise steps. Now we can fudge those numbers a little bit. For example, if this was 21 and three quarters of an inch, we might go for seven and a quarter inch three steps to get us there or if it's less we can go with a little bit less but it's ultimately we're aiming for seven inch rise steps maybe as little as six and three quarters or maybe as much as seven and a half inches but this is going to ultimately depend on your local code and building codes so definitely check with that but that falls within a safe area for us with our steps we try to aim for at least a 16 inch tread if this was coming out directly from a house so the door opens up and there is a step there we would actually essentially build a platform for that first step so that if they're trying to get to a barbecue, they have something in their hands, they can easily swing around that door, open that door safely, and they're not fumbling around with a 16 inch tread on that step. Rather, they have a platform there that they can maneuver as they open the door and come in and out as they please, followed by 16 inch tread steps to get us down to grade. In this case, they've got plenty of room to maneuver with the ports that they have so we're going to go for just two 16 inch tread steps plus that final step up to the porch is our final step there to give us three steps now if we were going to install one step here so we have a step down from the porch to a step and then a step to a patio we would have to build this area up so this would be one major raised patio, essentially. As opposed to what you see in this final product, we actually are able to build on grade for the initial part of the raised patio before it finally gets to the seat wall area which is where the raised patio actually starts. And if we did three steps down, so we would essentially be stepping down below the existing grade until we get out further into that seat wall area where then it would be a smaller raised patio, we would actually have to have two retaining walls or almost garden walls at either side of these steps to be able to hold back the area beyond those steps. And essentially those would just be garden walls replacing the garden beds that are there in this final product. That being said, neither of these options really appealed to me and I didn't even present them to the client. And ultimately I don't like three steps, especially in a backyard space. If I can get away with two steps, building two steps, I'm very happy with that. Three, you're getting into a little bit too much. Rather I would separate those steps downs into a couple different raised patios if they're looking for more than one space. In this case, they are only looking for one space, so two step downs is plenty. Now with planning this project, we have to measure the slope. So we start with a zero point at where the steps will get us down to, and then we measure at the very end of this project to understand how high above grade our raised patio is going to be when comparing to that existing grade. Essentially with this project, we're somewhere around 12 inches. So at the steps is zero and at the very back of this raised patio is negative 12 inches that we measured. So essentially we know with our raised patio, we're gonna be 12 inches higher to be able to meet that grade from these steps down to that raised patio. But of course we can apply our 1 8th of an inch per foot slope 
And that brings us closer to about nine inches, being that this is a 24 foot run. So that gives us our slope down to meet where that retaining wall would be to be able to create this raised patio. And just to make this raised patio a little bit more functional, we turned the wall into a seat wall. So we extended that wall up and provided about a 16 to 18 inch seat wall with some nice and natural stone caps placed on top of this. Wherever I can, I try to get natural stone caps for my seat walls, for any feature walls especially. Step caps as well, though you have to be careful with salt degradation. So if the client uses a lot of salt, you may want to seal that natural stone. For this client, they are gone in the winter time, so they don't even have to bother about putting salt down in this area. So natural stone step caps and natural stone seat wall caps was the perfect application for this, and it really gives it a finished product. There aren't many concrete based products that are caps that I'm too fond of. So whenever I can, I go for natural stone. And with this construction, whenever we are building some sort of wall or having caps on top of something, whenever we can, we throw in some hardscape lighting underneath those caps to give this a nice appeal at nighttime. And this just finishes things off completely with this project. On one side of this project, it was a bit too much of a step down. We couldn't really build this area up. It was about six inches higher because this area has the swale in between the houses, so it really drops off. So we also installed a step on this side, but on the other side, it actually meets the grade really nicely. We just had to build it up about two inches with some topsoil. Whenever you're building a raised patio seat wall like this, and the slope is moving towards that seat wall area, you do want to make sure that you have some weeping holes between those blocks, some spaces in between where water can escape out and over that area so that that seat wall is not acting as a dam. This is this project explained in a nutshell. If you want to learn more about hardscape installation, we have plenty of courses available in the How to Hardscape membership platform. We've got interlocking concrete pavement, construction, retaining wall construction, hardscape lighting, design and installation, as well as gas fire features. All of that is already available and we've got courses coming out each and every month with this membership platform. The link is in the description below. We also have the How to Hardscape podcast, so definitely check that out if you want to get into the industry or really own a contracting business of any sort. That really helps with many different industry experts coming onto the show and sharing their advice with owning and operating a business. And if you enjoy these videos, please give it a like, comment below any questions that you have, and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more hardscaping content. Thank you so much for watching.